do receive um, a fair amount of phone calls from parents and grandparents um, who've just received a diagnosis of Rett syndrome or whose children have been tested and they're waiting for results. After the diagnosis, a reaction which I had, which was I need to find out as much as possible about this syndrome, which none of us knew about. The parents are uh, in shock, denial, grieving, you know, a multitude of emotions, all of which um, I can relate to. He said, well, we're not sure 100%, but based on what you've been telling us, we'd like to test her for Rett syndrome. And I remember I said, no, no, not that one, it's a bad one. You go through a huge range of emotions in the blink of an eye. Your world, for a split second, just shatters. I'd read about it before and I remember thinking, thank God she doesn't have this. Whatever she has, thank God it's not this. But it was. My sister has Rett syndrome and she cannot use her, her hands or move around very well. Rett syndrome makes her like not walk, talk. She has seizures really often. Rett syndrome doesn't really let you do anything. I think children and adults with Rett syndrome are probably among the most vulnerable population that exists. It pushes you to, to your limits. It pushes everybody to their limits. The one thing which Rett syndrome has in terms of the technology and the research is that the faulty gene has been found which causes this. Huda Zagby identified the MECP2 gene as the causative gene for Rett syndrome in 1999. That was after a 16 year search. Not a lot of disorders have genes. Alzheimer's doesn't, Parkinson's doesn't, autism doesn't, which means that scientists have uh, a lot to sink their teeth into. Professor Bird has proven that under certain laboratory circumstances, Rett symptoms can be reversed. The theory is that you could completely reverse Rett syndrome. Can you imagine? It would be amazing. I mean, Hannah would have a life, you know? The mission of RSRT is to accelerate the development of treatments and cures for Rett syndrome and related MECP2 disorders. I think there are really many ways RSRT is helping Rett research, one of which is, is really taking a chance on these high-risk but potentially high-impact approaches. As we fund more and more research, a cure becomes ever closer. I think Monica is a sort of a unique individual. She is able to talk as an equal, really, to scientists. And RSRT conducts itself as a place that sees the entire world as its laboratory. You want to bring people on board so that they know this is a problem, and so they see it as something that they could, uh, could get involved in, and then you want to give them resources to do it. And you don't want to be satisfied with uh, the existing spread of science constantly want to improve that. You know, the funding side of this research is just so massively important. Massively important. It touches me. It makes me realize that my research isn't just basic. My research can actually affect these people's lives. You know, the sort of thing that um, is bold <laughs> and risky, but if it works, it will um, make a gigantic difference. The idea that these girls are trapped in these bodies, they could just be able to speak and to be released from their trapped world. I said to her, Han, are you telling me that your favorite thing that you did today was spending time with your family? She looked right at me, yes. So, somebody's home.